Hey guys, what's going on? Daniel from ModBot here, and I'm super excited in this video to review the ZoneStar Z5M Dual Extrusion 3D Printer. It was sent to me at, from GearBest, and it is my first dual extrusion machine ever. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review. This machine uses what is basically a E3D Cyclops hot end. And E3D Cyclops hot end or that style, again, this isn't an authentic E3D Cyclops, but it's you know their clone or version of it. Uh, it has two extrusions coming in. So as you can see, there's two bowed tubes coming in, but there's only one nozzle coming out. And typically with dual extrusion 3D printing, you have what's called a prime tower or a purge block, and that's where the excess material goes uh, before it switches over, because naturally when, when you're printing, even if you had dual extrusion, um, there's gonna be some drooping of filament, uh, melted filament, and so before it goes back over the printed part and you get that droop or slop, it has to clean it off, so it just basically prints a waste material or waste block. Well, due to the fact that this is the Cyclops style where it's got two in, one out, it has to have a pretty significant uh, purge tower in order for it to actually clear the nozzle. So um, that's what this block is. I don't know how you can see it from there, but there's a little block here besides this traffic cone that is the purge tower. So I was really excited to get my hands on this. It looked basically like a clone version of the Creality Ender 3, which as we know is a 3D printer that I really love. So it looks almost like that, but with the dual extrusion setup, and uh, I was really excited to get my hands on it. And um, it's got a, so for some of the specs on it, it's got a 220 by 220 by 230 build volume. It's got aluminum extrusions, uh, 2020. It's got one lead screw for the Z axis. It's nice because the power supply is actually covered and I believe that there's a fuse, it might not be a fuse, but it's at least covered and it's gotten a little on and off switch and a cable that plugs in and plugs out. So it's nice that the mains are not exposed. Um, the bed can get up to 110 and the hot end says it can get up to 260. And the uh, bed is actually an aluminum bed um, with a knockoff build tech esque type sheet on top, which is pretty common or um, popular in these cheaper kits and they work relatively well. Um, I would say that prints normally stick a little bit too well to it compared to actual genuine build tech, but hey, it works. It's better than having nothing. So I was really excited again to get my hands on it and uh, the printer said that it's sort of pre-assembled or some of the harder components are pre-assembled. After receiving it, that's really not the case. Um, the hot end, sure, it was a bit assembled and on the uh, power supply with the um, the board inside here that was in place with the cables already connected on that end So they did do that, but it's not like the under three the Creality under three took me about an hour to assemble uh, This guy was about four to five hours. I did it in one sitting on a Saturday or Sunday on one of my days off and The build process on this thing was incredibly incredibly rough um, so for starters, the instructions are on a little SD card PDF, which isn't that uncommon. But the main issue I had is that this machine has a couple other variants to it. There's a single extrusion version and there's another version as well. And all of those instructions are compacted into this PDF. And there's multiple different printers showing you how to assemble if you have this version, this version, or this version on the same pages. And it was really confusing because you have to constantly remember to look, otherwise you might be doing something that is not for this machine, it's for another variation of it. So that was frustrating. The pictures were really, really unclear. Um, the screws came in this plastic box that were um, mixed together, so then they weren't labeled, so I had to take everything apart, manually measure them, which was rough. Um, there was a couple missing screws, which basically made it to where I had to go into my bag of just random screws, so luckily I had that, but that was um, kind of annoying. But all of those things I was pretty much willing to at least look beyond or look past or you know just I've experienced some of those things before so they weren't all that big of a deal frustrating certainly but they weren't a deal breaker for me uh, but the thing that to me was a big deal breaker is there's a little aluminum plate that connects this whole X carriage assembly to the wheels and bearings and the holes there's three screws so there's um, two holes on top and one hole on the bottom that connects that well, it was actually machined incorrectly. So none of the holes lined up. And I was super frustrated because again, there's no photo of it, how it's supposed to go in. So I'm sitting there trying to mess around with it. And the end result of what I had to do was actually take my drill and drill into this aluminum plate and create my own holes or widen the existing holes. And 
it looks really janky. I mean, you can't see it because it's hidden in, in the assembly, but if you saw it, it was very janky. Uh, there's no way that anybody really would do that when they were assembling. They probably would have just either given up or thought something was wrong, I don't know. But either way, that was kind of the final, my line in the sand where I just decided, you know, like enough's enough, this is ridiculous. But I still had to move on. I, you know, was able to get the printer assembled. Everything, you know, was moving smoothly and at least, at least working. Um, electronic wise, everything worked pretty much right away. Um, that was not too difficult, but yeah, the build experience was absolutely terrible. It felt a lot like a really low QC slash almost a beta prototype unit, not a final end product of what I would expect. I get that the cost is $200, $200 or $210, so it's very, very low end, but still, I mean, when you've got companies like Creality or G-Tech or um, any Cubic or, you know, they're able to provide a much better, even TiVo, um, you know, user experience, this was just bad this was really bad um, so moving forward let's talk about how the printing went um, so when I initially got it assembled I wanted to just try out single extrusion to see how that was working so they give you this little it's almost like a pin or needle that you can unscrew one of these Bowden tubings push it in and it'll keep filament from you know rising up or out of the empty tube and so I was able to print with just a single extrusion and the SD card did come with um, quite a few files on there for both single and dual extrusion which was nice so I loaded it up put in some this is Matter Hackers uh, neon green pro series PLA and I printed I went to bed um, this guy was printing and uh, overall it turned out pretty well um, there was a slight bit of either under extrusion or potentially a little bit of delamination from not having the um, extruder quite hot enough. Uh, but overall, when I woke up and saw this, I was pleased. I thought, this is really not bad. Um, I was expecting much worse, to be honest with you, from everything leading up to it. So that was first print. Then I went ahead and printed out this Lucky Cat, which turned out okay. Uh, it actually turned out pretty good up until the ears. The ears are really brittle. I'll probably just break it right here so you can see it. but. You can hear it and like this part came off you know right now it's just super brittle um, it's not quite so bad down below but i honestly think that because this is pla it's got one cooling fan that blows down but it it blows it just it, it's not it's not a good setup for cooling pla and because these parts were so small and so close together i believe that it just didn't have time to cool down and so that's why the filament turned out so brittle like this so um, after that, I unloaded it. I loaded in some other PLA um, from Matter Hackers. This is Build Series Gold, and printed out this little gecko lizard guy, which really didn't turn out bad. I still had similar issues where the extrusion's just not perfect. Um, again, it feels to me like it's more along the ends of, well, it's a little bit under extruded, but also potentially that the um, extruder just needs to be hotter. Uh, I believe I was printing it. Well, to be honest with you, actually, I'm not sure what I was printing these at because I went with their default profiles. So it might have been, it was probably lower than what I normally would have done. So um, yeah, these are those prints. So once I was done with the single extrusion, I was ready. I was super excited to dive into dual extrusion. So I printed out, there's no spool holder for this guy. So you can either create your own or I printed out some of the, um, the uh, printed out some of these guys, which is called a tush. Um, it's basically two prints or two parts that pop into these uh, 805 bearings, which I had a ton of from the fidget spinner craze. Um, so I made these and I created uh, two of them, one for each spool and your spool just can sit next to the printer and it has like no, no tension. It just feeds really nicely. So I did two of these and I was off doing some of the test prints. Um, I did two test prints initially and um, they turned out terrible, like destroyed. I don't even have them to show you guys. Um, they just were really under extruded, things weren't working well. So then I figured, okay, um, it's time to try to um, slice something myself. So I've gone the SD card and this is where I got even more frustrated. Uh, there was no, no preset profile. Um, there was no instructions on how to set up the retraction or things like that, you're basically on your own. So um, I tried a combination of uh, uh, Repetir and Cura and had no luck whatsoever. Um, I had a little bit more luck with Repetir 
but it took me a lot of digging. Um, I looked at similar printers and tried to get some of their profiles, but I just had no luck. Basically, I was having a lot of clogging. Um, I was having a lot of under extrusion. I was having a lot of issues where it would switch colors and then something would go wrong then or it wouldn't switch back. Um, so it was really, really frustrating. Like this, this cone that didn't finish right here is actually pretty much what kept happening. happening. So I did the base fine. It had its first color change, which it didn't do enough, uh, didn't transition enough. Then it did the you know orange fine again. Then it tried doing the yellow and it just completely clogged. It's probably super brittle. Yeah, it's just, it's just been a complete and total nightmare and mess and disappointing experience. Um, so I really, really, really cannot recommend this printer. In its current state, it is just, it's a train wreck. Um, it's, it's if, if the company wanted to, you know, redo their instructions, get their QC, you know, a little bit more dialed in, a lot more dialed in, machine their parts correctly, put together some kind of a profile, um, then I would be absolutely willing to give this printer another go. And I think that it's really got potential. I think that it's probably pretty close. They've got 80% of it here and it's good, but the 20% that's bad is terrible and it just, overshadows the rest of what the machine potentially could be. So at this point in time, if you're looking for a similar machine in the price range of $200, um, if you're going for a single extrusion, I still highly recommend the Corraldi Ender 3. I think it is the best bang for your buck in that price range and there's a lot of upgrades available. If you want to a dual extrusion machine like this that I'd recommend the GTEC A10M. I'll link you guys to both of these in the description. Um, the GTEC A10M is a very similar machine to this, a very similar machine to the Ender 3. Um, also dual extrusion with Cyclops, but um, I don't own one, I haven't owned one of those, but I've got quite a few friends that have on them and they've had some really awesome dual extrusion prints coming off of that printer. And there is a much more active community um, that is helping each other get this printer really dialed in. So I would love to get my hands on one of the GTEC uh, printers. I actually might end up purchasing one myself. We'll see here, but I, might, I may end up even playing around with this a little more. I think I've got two things I'm either gonna do. The first is just keep trying um, with some different settings and see if I can't get it you know, to print something successfully with dual extrusion, or I'm gonna probably completely take off this X carriage and just slap on an E3D V6 or something like that and use it as a single extrusion machine because the 2020 aluminums are pretty you know, rigid and the machine itself isn't bad per se, but the dual extrusion part of it is just done terribly. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate. This is one of the harshest reviews I think I've done of an actual printer, but I really don't want people to think that I'm giving this machine you know, two thumbs up when it's just, you are in for a world of hurt in its current state. So anyways, it's unfortunate, but it's bound to happen. Not every machine with all these machines coming out can be a great machine. So if you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions or recommendations on what I can do, do you think setting wise or a profile you want to send me? I'd be super stoked on any help really. Um, I'm not going to put too much more time in this machine because of the amount of other projects I've got going on. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Let's see if we can get 100 likes. That would be insane if we could hit 100 likes on this video. Um, and you know, that would be that'd be killer. So I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I am out. Peace guys.